Petra's incredible gardens were discovered after 2,000 years. Breathtaking and forgotten gardens in the city of Petra have been discovered after 2,000 years in hiding, and archaeologists couldn't be more excited. They found incredible things such as big fountains and a large pool. These are believed to have been irrigation systems back in the day. They were all situated at the heart of the gardens. They were also the little feature that made the gardens possible in the middle of the arid desert. The city of Petra is widely known for its sandstone canyon that leads directly to Al Khaznet, being a movie star starring an Indiana Jones movie where Harrison Ford and Sean Connery ride out of the canyon and into the treasury in their quest for the Holy Grail. Although today it takes a different role, the importance of Petra was very different back in the days. It was one of the most critical water stops in the Middle East, where people that were crossing the desert in camels could take a sip and refresh. So it's refreshing for the researchers to find out that an excellent irrigation system also ran the city. It featured paths likely shaded by vines, trees and date palms, and grasses, which were cultivated next to a vast 44-meter wide swimming pool. The Nabatians extensive way of taming nature was no more than pure propaganda. The water stop was there to show wealth and power. What a better way to show your strength than putting a significant amount of water in the middle of the desert. They could thank their popularity to the ingenious hydraulic system they invented, which not only allowed for people of the city to have a steady supply of water, but to also irrigate the opulent and massive garden. Previously to that, it was thought impossible to have a water supply that big in the waste desert, but they changed history and they did it very well. The pool marks the terminus for an aqueduct that transported water from one of the springs, Ein Brock, located in the hills outside of Petra. Leanne Badal, associate professor of anthropology from the Penn State Barron College, told Harrods, The pool's monumental architecture and verdant garden served as a visual celebration for the Nabation's success at providing water to the city center. The system has proven to be incredibly complicated. Archaeologists have found a shaft that appears to have led water more than 10 meters downward from the aqueduct system to the pool level and underground channels that help control runoff during the rainy season. They were not into wasting even one drop of water. Not only they had a lot of water, but also purification processes. The intricate system of channels, ceramic pipelines, underground cisterns and water tanks, which also filtered the water, allowed the people of Petra to cultivate crops, harvest fruit, produce wine and olive oil, as well as build a lavish garden with a monumental open-air pool in the middle of the desert. The idea of taking water in and using it to a city's advantage is not new, and a lot of cities at the time made just that, but the difference is that those other cities had a river near, for example. Petra, located on the northwest corner of the Arabian Desert, made a name for itself because of the lack of water the desert experiences. Petra had to be a beautiful place to visit. It was strategically located at the crossroads of two important trade routes. One linked the Red Sea with Damascus, the other connected the Persian Gulf with Gaza on the shores of the Mediterranean. Back then, caravans had to take on a significant and dry journey carrying precious spices. They had to trek for weeks before encountering the lavish doors of Petra. Petra meant food and lodging and, above all, cold, refreshing water. But of course, and according to the Roman historian Pliny, these comforts did not come free. The visitors had to pay lodging and gifts had to be given to the guards, gatekeepers, priests, and king's servants. But it was a price that was worth paying to be able to get the expensive spices to the wealthy European cities. The gardens were practically a miracle because Petra only gets 10 to 15 centimeters of water of rain a year. Without the fantastic purifying and storing system they developed, Petra would not have been possible. Almost every drop of water that fell over Petra was conserved. Many pipes stored the water in uncountable underwater cisterns to make sure that the people of Petra had water no matter the season of the year. The end of Petra came when Rome took possession of the city back in 106 CE and its importance in trading tracks began to fade. It would finally succumb at the end of the Byzantine Empire's rule around 700 CE.